Hi, everybody. It's Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have Tina Anderson here. She is an author. She is a spiritual guide. She also is a speaker and she has her own podcast. She's an amazing woman and she has just recently relaunched one of her books and it's about unchaosing yourself. And today we're going to talk about spiritual chaos and what it means and how to overcome. And I'd like to introduce Tina right now and have Tina tell you a little about herself and what she does. And Tina, so tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Oh, thank you. Yes. So spirituality, you know, the whole realm of that, I have done basic intuitive readings. I started with that and I've done a lot of um, pretty heavy duty spiritual coaching for whatever reason, spirit sent me some heavy stuff. Uh, and so I've done that as well. I've done spiritual parties, like I've done um, raise your vibration parties and I've done goddess gatherings and anything where I can infuse some fun and levity and lightness with spirituality in the in terms of tapping into your own intuitive knowingness, your inner knowingness. I'm very much about facilitating that kind of growth. We're in this together and every person, every individual that starts to have more awareness about their own alignment, their own soul journey, their blueprint, then opens up a gateway for somebody else without even saying anything because we're frequency and energy. And so all of my work in since 2000, about 2015, when I had my awakening has been geared towards helping people to understand who they are on a deeper level, understanding their soul journeys, releasing some of the baggage so that the next step can be taken to move into more joy and more inner peace, and then take the next step. And at the same time, allowing the, everyone that's walking side by side to do that as well. And that is ultimately my goal. I, I, When someone asks me what I do, I don't say that I'm here for unity consciousness, but the big picture, you know, if we had a serious, you know, kind of deep dive talk, which we're not doing, but I'll just say it anyway, <clears throat> is that that's really what I'm, what spirit sent me is why I incarnated was to create more unity consciousness and to help us all understand that we're more alike than different and to allow each other to move and grow in the ways that we need to while others do the same without so much judgment and so much baggage and so much hurt. So that that's really what I'm about. And that gets serious, but I like to have fun. And I believe in finding the levity in situations as much as you can, as quick as you can. So I, I counter, I, I balance the two. And the last thing I'll say is that I, I guess you could call me from a positive sense, a shapeshifter. Spirit has also asked me to keep one foot in sort of the 3D normal, whatever you want to call that living and yeah. to understand what it's like to wake up every day with normal stuff that we deal with. And then I can move into the more metaphysical world pretty quickly. I can move into that and I can go back and forth so that I'm given issues, situations, people learning that always keep me grounded in what it feels like to walk on earth as humans that we do, to have to go to work, to deal with relationship issues, loss, uh, anger, frustration, betrayal, all those things. And then I can tap into the spiritual side with my guides and angels and whoever else shows up. And then I can move into that world and help people and I can go back and forth. And that's what I'm called to do so that I never lose sight of what it feels like if you are struggling and you don't have a huge spiritual base and you have a lot of chaos, which is what I write about and what I also experience. So I, I don't know if that, I lost track of what I was saying as far as your question and Stacy. <laughs> hopefully I answered that in a, a, in a roundabout way. You did. And, you know, when it came to writing your book, what motivated you to write your book about unchaosing yourself? And what does the, the concept unchaosing yourself really stand for? Yeah, great question. I Two things happened. One is, and of course, we don't realize things of, until we get some perspective. But I, after several successful careers and a lot of, you know, endeavors and I'm multi-passionate, 
I realized that I could achieve a lot of different things pretty well, but what I couldn't ever master, what I couldn't ever take care of, what I couldn't ever control, feel good about, feel relaxed about, feel at peace with was my binge eating and my necessity to use food to numb out. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't know at the time and realized what I was numbing out from unprocessed pain from my childhood, which a lot of us have, right? I mean, oh, yeah. mine mine was from my mom divorcing my dad when I was 14 and moving out of the house and me being responsible basically as a surrogate parent and having to take over at that age. And at that point, also hearing messages from family members about what you need to look like in order to be successful and to get a husband. And then you you put those two together. And at a very young age, I started with a, a journey down the wrong way with food, my relationship with food. That created chaos in the background yeah. 24-7 that I never could understand or fix. And it was always the shadow that this, this part of me that I felt ashamed about at the time. So my chaos was this back noise, this background, this self-talk, this self-criticism, and then this hiding of who I really was. Because back, you know, in when I was growing up, we didn't talk about this. This wasn't known. There wasn't an internet. I was bulimic for a while. We didn't know what throwing up was. We, no one, no one really knew about it. It's so prevalent now. So my chaos started back then. And then it manifested in different ways, always connected to numbing out from what I didn't want to feel. And a lot of that times so it was just even boredom or frustration over not having something exciting. So the yeah. book was a result of all of that in the beginning. And then when I had my awakening in 2014, and I realized I had this gift and I started doing readings, intuitive readings that moved into spiritual coaching. And I was still dealing with this. Yeah, I realized, oh my gosh, this is gonna this is gonna go full circle because now I'm understanding it from a different perspective, and all yeah. the clients that I that spirit was sending me because I know you know spirit in, sends whoever's supposed to get whoever's supposed to get with whomever's supposed to get that's how it works right. So yeah. I was sent a lot of people with chaos in different ways, but I see an underlining same pattern with the number one thing, which is an unmet need and mm -hmm. conditioning that creates needs that we don't recognize or know how to meet. So we meet right. them in an unhealthy way. And the yes. book that that's where that came from. And then there was a, I had a coaching program and I worked with people on all these different steps and figured out, oh, I have a process that seems to work. And that's how it all created. And that's how it was all created under the auspices of chaos, which we all experience at different times and at different levels. That's life, right? Yes. I mean, exactly. we're that life was created out of chaos, really the big chaotic event as they call it. Right. And so yeah. it's never going away. It's just how we manage it, recognize it, use it, appreciate mm -hmm. it and integrate it. Yes. Cause I don't think people realize, but you could take, you know, chaotic moments in your life and you can actually learn from them. They can make you stronger. They can build, you know, they can build resilience in you. They can help you realize and, and come to by the experiences you go through, come to realizations in your life where you grow and you're able to actually use those things to actually strengthen yourself and elevate to higher levels and even be able to help others through your own experiences in life. You know, so sometimes even though chaos is not a good thing, you can turn it into a good thing if you actually learn how to. Yeah, absolutely. Chaos means something's out of alignment in your life with your soul blueprint. Yeah. It mm -hmm. means, and it's a, you know, I often tell, I used to tell my clients and that people come to me sometimes because I feel really stuck, right? I'm, I feel stuck. I don't know what to do. And I'm like, you know what? It's a gift. It's a, that's what I call a stop down. It's your spirit team saying, before you go further into this, let's take a second and figure something out. Yes. And it's up to us to use that time, but it's a gift. It's hold, it's a holding pattern. You're not stuck. You're being held in a pattern right here to figure out why that's happening to you, to look at it, to dissect it, to embrace it, to use it, and then say, okay, now I'm, thank you. 
it can be recycled for the greater good. And yeah. chaos is a sign that something is not in alignment. It's a it's a gift in that way. It's, yes. it's helping you to get back to where you need to be or to finally start getting where you're supposed to be in sense of your whole soul blueprint. Right. So it, when you're in the midst of it, of course, and we've all been there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, we've all been there. And sometimes that chaos is something that you've built on and built on and call it the chaos trap. And you, you keep you're, you're glued in, you're trapped in, you have an anchor that's holding you into. And other times it's dropped on you and you feel like a victim. Like it's a, a chaotic event that you had nothing to do with, you think in the beginning, right? And then you realize how it's all connected. So it can be the smallest stuff that you continue to create with your decisions. And it can be a tsunami that just drops down on you. And then you have to find your way out of that darkness. Either yeah. way, it's a way for you to get back into alignment, find alignment, find a gift and move into the next version of you into your life. And so if we can look at it that way and be curious, which is one of my big things, always be curious, mm -hmm. then there's so many doors that can open for yeah. you. It, it's it's life-changing, even the smallest things, even the smallest pivots grow right. into something bigger, right? A small step that you continue taking turns into you know, miles and miles of territory. Mm -hmm. So exactly. uh, that's, but, but that, let me just say, it took me a while to come to this conclusion based on yeah. my journey and the journey of hundreds and hundreds of clients and right. what I was seeing. So I know it's a lot easier said than done at times. And I just want to acknowledge that. I, I totally understand what it's like to be in the storm, yeah, you know, swirling around, trying to figure out how to even take your foot out of, you know, one finger out of it. So I, I get that. I really do. A lot of compassion if you're dealing with that right now. I really, I really do. And people, you know, the biggest thing I find for people is when they are out of alignment, they know something's not right. They don't know exactly what's going on. Some people, you know, have the ability to know where they're out of alignment, but then there are people who have different, different blockages in different parts of their body, or they feel out of alignment and they know something's wrong, but they don't know how to get back into alignment. You know, what are some suggestions that you can give people when they are out of alignment and they just don't know what to do to get themselves back to where they were or where they want to be. Oh my gosh, that's such a great question. That's the question, right? And that's what I heard. Like, what do I do? Where do I start? And so first of all, if you are feeling all of that, one of the first things I would suggest to you is you have got to exit your environment that is creating that. So if yeah. it's in your home, you've got to go to a park. You've got to go, if it is in your work environment, then you have to specifically be very very intentional about finding a place, probably not your house or somewhere else where you are free of the normal influences that pull you back in and remind you of whatever, it, all the stuff that you're dealing with. You have yeah. to get some perspective and you have to get away and mm -hmm. you can get away a mile away. You can take a, a weekend. And I have people say, well, I don't have time. I'm like, you don't have, you have, you have to take the time. Like this is the time because you're, if you're continuing in this mess, then this isn't living. So, right. so it is, it is that critical that you knew you have to take the time. So number one is you have got to exit the environment and the influences that are creating the chaos, even, even for an hour, I'll, I'll take 10 minutes a day. If that's all you can take, you have got to get out. That's number one. You, you it's very hard to create any kind of clarity in the same position that is creating the chaos. So I just mm -hmm. want to say that again, if you're in a circle of chaos and if you want to picture a circle right now and put yourself in the middle of all the chaos and you step in the circle and then I say to you, Oh, now I want you to find clarity within that circle with all yes. the chaos. That's literally almost impossible. And now if I create a small circle to the right or left of you, and I say, step into that circle right now, and you can look at your circle of chaos but you're looking at it as an observer. Mm -hmm. So stepping out, becoming observer in the becoming an observer, that's number one, huge, super important. And yes. you might have lots of people talking at you, telling you what you need to do. And that's chaotic as well, because 
people talk to us from their own filters and life experiences and their own fear on what, what helps them to feel comfortable. So if you're listening right. to too many voices, you're hearing their comfort level. Yes. And they're not on your journey. So when I say influences, it's sometimes the people that you trust and love as well. You just need to step out. Okay. That's super important. Super important, right? Just get out. Oh, yeah. You have to, that's, that's one. And then two, uh, I really believe a lot in journaling and I believe in automatic journaling and wells where you just start writing without, you don't have to have any, any, um, prompts. You just start right. writing anything that comes out of you because there's so much stuff inside of you. That's probably percolating, right? You yeah. got to get that out so to get clarity. So you can right. just start writing. I don't know why I'm writing. This is dumb. This is BS, but I'm just going to write. Oh my gosh. I, I can't believe. And the next thing you know, you start writing about something that your mom said or your dad or your coworker. Uh, mm -hmm. So the second part about this really important question is there is a part of you that's getting fed and you have to ask yourself the why question over and over again. And that comes from like NLP coaching and all of that. But it's, okay, first of all, the big question, um, you know, why do I feel chaos? Okay. And you write it all down. I feel chaos because, and there's seven things there. And then you look at each one and you can go deeper into the whys. And this is like self-coaching, basically, right. you know, um, I hate my job and my boss makes me feel crazy because she doesn't listen to me and, you know, okay. So then you look at that for a second and what about that? Why is that bugging you? Right. And then you start to see a pattern. Usually in chaos, you usually start to see a pattern of where you've inserted things into your life that support some sort of conditioning mm -hmm. that you have. So if it's abandonment and you, you grew up feeling like, I could be left. I, I don't trust people. I need to watch out all the time for what someone could do or uh, does someone really love me? Okay. If I do people, if I, I'm not thinking people pleasing, but if I, I, I work my best, if I stay late, you know, then they'll appreciate me and they won't leave me and this job, whatever, you know, I could go down the rabbit hole, but there's yeah. always conditioning and you, it's your job with the help of just self-coaching or finding someone to help you start to peel away this, these unmet needs in this, these conditions yes. that you are jumping right back into to basically support something that you don't want to support. That's what chaos is yeah. really. Most of the time, we don't know what's driving us, but we know what's comfortable. We know what feels comfortable. And when we're children and we don't have the emotional intelligence to deal with whatever we're dealing with, we find the wrong way. And that is programmed and that continues. So I hope I'm not losing everyone here, but it's the external environment getting out. I highly recommend journaling. It's the why questions and starting to ask yourself these deeper questions, but you do that in self-reflection with time away. And then yeah. you're moving to the root cause of an unmet need, which is comes from the why questions and, and observing your family and growing up and what you were told to be the truth. Yeah. Right. And what need are you meeting with these decisions you're making and these patterns? And it's not comfortable. It's not fun. It takes a lot of work generally to do this. And I had a lot of people just feel like I, I just don't want to do this. But just stay in my pattern. It's more comfortable. And so be ready for your ego to say, We're, it's not that bad. We're fine. Yeah. Because I see that a lot too. So I hope that those are the two things without getting too deep in the weeds with all of this, but you have got to step away, please, to get perspective. And you then need to do some self-reflection on what is being met in the chaos. And I'll just give you one last example because it's a really easy one to see people who are over committed, mm -hmm. super busy. Um, I had, I had soccer moms that would be, I'm so busy. I don't have time. It's just, Oh my God, this is freaking chaotic. And, and then, you know, and, and find out what, well, but you just volunteered for the bake sale to lead it. Right. Yeah. And then you just, you're, you're also on the committee for your son's um, soccer team. And right. you also do this. I said, so let me ask you a question. If you take all that away, what's left? Yeah. What's left is you and your own 
S H I T. What's left is what you don't want to deal with. So you're busy, you're yeah. overcommitted. So you don't have to feel mm -hmm. certain things and that you can be liked and valued and needed yes. externally. So that's just one example of something I saw a lot is overcommitment into chaos that continues. And as soon as you, you start to recognize that you realize, oh my gosh, people need me. That feels really good. Yeah. I'm really busy. I don't have time to think about my own stuff. Um, and I've never thought of it, but I really don't want to think about my own stuff. Right. Right. So that that's just one example that can show that I that I use because I think everybody can identify with overcommitment and yeah. the unmet need. What need is being met when you're when you overcommit yourself all the time. Right. I think a lot of people too is that they it's very hard to seek the truth of why you know they go through chaos and then they they might be in a chaotic um a situation but it it's you know like you said it stems there's a root cause you know it goes back you know it goes back into your childhood years of where it all began and this chaotic behavior if it's not healed at some point will continue and sometimes because we we go into situations where we might have been in chaos and we might have had trauma in our lives and we put ourselves in these nonstop chaotic you know situations not even realizing it is because we grew up in an environment where chaos was normal so then you tend to feed yourself into these chaotic situations and chaotic friends and chaotic behaviors because it 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 seems normal to you until that one day comes when you realize that this is not normal. I'm not happy. I'm hurting. I need help, you know? And I think, I think, you know, some people get to that realization and some, you know, and it's, and sometimes people don't, but for the people who do, I, I think it's so important, like you said, to get out, get yourself, draw yourself out of that situation. Cause they say the five people you center yourself around are the people you will become. So you think about it. When you think about that, Think about the five people around you that you see uh, most of the time. Do you want to be like them? Do you want to act like them? And if you do, continue to be with them. But if these people are not the type of people you want to be like, then maybe it is time, like you said, to step away. Yeah, absolutely. And we have these deep needs that, like that we were talking about, that are created when we don't have the ability to process and they get stuck in there and they become a pattern and they anchor us. And studies have shown that we like familiarity. So even if you say to someone, listen, you know, you really need to end this relationship. This person's um, narcissistic. It's very, you're in a very codependent relationship. The thought for that person who has been conditioned and has been in it so long, the thought of the uncertainty is scarier than staying with something that is uncomfortable and negative, but is familiar. And that has been shown, it's been proven that people will pick what's familiar because the unknown is too scary. We're yes. kind of programmed for that um, when we when we grow up in something, or even if something happens when you're you know, let's say in your teens or even maybe let's say 20, something like a very, a very, a major crisis or something that is really pathological, something really severe that can shift you. It doesn't always happen when you're five or seven or whatever, but that can yeah. completely shift you. Right. And mm -hmm. the influences issue is that again, it's familiar. And that's why people say, why do I always pick the wrong person? First right. of all, we're frequency and energy, number one. So you need to understand your energy and frequency are out there before you get there. Yep. So if you're vibrating at a low level or a high level, you're a match. And you probably have heard this before. It is so, so true. And another reason why I used to tell my clients when I had couples, I'd say, okay, I just want to tell you what can happen here. If one yeah. person moves up and one doesn't, you're not a match anymore. It's like Houston, we have a problem. You know what I mean? Like this isn't going to work. And if you are working on yourself and you're looking to find a partner in life, wait till you get to the place where you want to attract that level of frequency. Yeah. Because we also have to understand with our influences that our heart frequency is even stronger than our brain frequency. So it's oh, way yeah. out there. So you're already a beacon. Do you want to be a beacon 
for somebody at a lower level that's full of shame or fear because you're dealing with that. And that person will come in and be like, oh yeah, I get it. I'm I'm in the same place. They might not, not that they even would say that to you. I'm just saying that's what's happening. Yeah. So number one, the influences, we don't even realize on a frequency level, this is happening. So yeah. get yourself right and understand if you look around. So, and it's one thing to have influences that maybe some of them you can't totally control, but if you're picking and choosing and allowing yourself to be around other types of influences and they're in your top five, then you need to say, yeah, I'm meeting a need in an unhealthy way. And that's based on something that I have not discovered, or I don't want to, or I don't want to work on it yet, but I'm ready and yeah. let's go, let's figure this out. And that's courageous and deep and juicy and amazing all at once right? Yeah. Ups and downs, highs and lows. Uh, oh, yeah. But it's the best thing you can do for yourself. And if you're in the people pleasing world, it's the best thing you can do for the other people who are codependent and also not in the right place. You working on yourself opens the doors for someone else. Right. You could be holding somebody else in place with your own issue. So yes. you're, you're right. You're holding each other so yeah. you do it for others. If you, if you're struggling with just, ah, motivation, do it for someone else, do it for the people who are being fed also in the wrong way. And then that's what I'm all about. Like, listen, we all owe it to each other as human yeah. beings who work on oh, this. Yeah. We owe it mm -hmm. to each other. If you're here yeah. on earth, you decided to incarnate <laughs> and take it on, you know, be yeah. a warrior and, and work on it. And I love what you said about, you know, that we're, we're all energy and frequency because we are people that, you know, people don't realize that because they look at it, they, you know, as humans, people who don't see outside the box, they see a human being, they see hair, they see the, the skin, they see the person talking, they see the physical aspects. But if we didn't have the energy and we didn't have the frequency, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be living. We wouldn't be a person. And sometimes that's hard for other people to resonate in their own head. But whatever energies, you know, that we have within us. And we and we we put those out to the universe. The universe is going to draw those people, other people, those type of people that we're drawn into our lives. So then you have to think about how you're feeling as a person. Do I like myself? Like maybe go in the mirror and say, okay, am I okay with the person that I see? What about me do I like? And what about me do I dislike maybe? And you know, what's causing me chaos in my life? And what's what's making me feel stuck in my life if, if things aren't going right? And then think about, you know, what can you change so you can change yourself maybe and also change the people around you too. What do you think about that? Yeah, absolutely. We're all gateways. You know, one of the, um, one of my sections is the um, second one is on acceptance. And one of the biggest, most important chapters for all of us, I believe myself included, of course, in that chapter is the chapter on forgiveness because when you forgive others for what they've done, you forgive yourself for what you've done, known and unknown, mm -hmm. then you open a gateway. And that's what you're talking about here. The, the gateways that we open for each other, it's sometimes you can see it right away, but many times you don't. Your wow. conversation from a more aware place, from more inner knowingness about you, a five minute conversation at a party, a networking event at the grocery store, that energy exchange that you don't even realize is coming from a more open heart, a more compassionate, loving heart. And, and that inner knowingness I just mentioned, that energy is going towards somebody else. And it's, it's intangible yet tangible. And so that's the effect that you can have. And we don't know our true impact while we're here on earth. And that ripple effect that you create on um, with that one person could have a domino effect into the thousands. You just don't know where, right. how, when you open up gateways with a higher frequency. Yeah. And, but imagine the power, imagine walking around knowing that at any given moment, you could do something like that just by a small gesture. Of course, there's the big gestures, but we tend to look at vanity metrics. Oh, look at Tony Robbins or look whatever, you know, but maybe something you do after you work on yourself has a bigger ripple effect than a speech to 6,000 people. You don't know right. the impact. So yes, it's, 
it, it's one of the motivating factors for me. And it's a, if you can think of it in those terms, if you're struggling, that your journey matters and that the smallest change could have a huge impact. You, we're not here to know. Sometimes we get to see it. Sometimes we get to see, you know, whatever I'm sure with you too, Stacey, someone you work with and you start to see the, um, the snowball effect in a good way, right? We do see that we get that gift, but we truly won't know until we transition yeah. what we've done. And we truly don't know that a small gesture was bigger than what seemed like a bigger gesture and impact right away. Right. No way to know. We have to trust and mm -hmm. we have to go into this understanding that we are gifts to each other at any given moment, right? At any given moment. And that is our energy and the raising of the frequency at a higher level. So right. that when you walk into a room, you with your energy have invited other people to feel like they can be themselves or be right. in their truth, just because your energy walking in because yes. you're in yours. Wow. Magic. Freaking magic, I think. It is magic. Yeah, right? I know. It's magic. Sure. It's for sure. You know, the, the biggest thing I think pe people, I know people on our on our station, especially, they struggle with is forgiveness. When somebody has hurt them, being able to forgive and let go is very hard because a lot of people, they feel so hurt and they feel scarred by the individual for whatever, whether they did something or said something or whatever that case may be, L let forgiving them and letting go, you know, what's your intake on that? Because so many people struggle with that. And, you know, once you're able to forgive, you feel so much better. You feel like you've been freed. But sometimes it's really hard to get to that point, even though you you understand why they may did it. Maybe they have a mental health issue. Maybe they're angry because of things that happen in their life, whatever the case may be. But it's still hard for people to forgive and let go. You know, from your perspective, that's part of the chaos, you know, on chaos in yourself. How do you forgive and let go? Yeah. Wow. Right. Um, which is Again, these things are easier said than done until you've started to work in that. Well, there's this, there's several things there that we can discuss. One is that, first of all, have the awareness that when you choose not to forgive, you're anchoring, you're anchoring yourself in the same energy that started with the discretion. You've yeah. you've decided to anchor yourself in that situation, and then you've re, you're recreating the same energy and frequency you felt in your body as yeah. you think about that without forgiveness. So you are deciding because you're getting fed some way, somehow. So let's be, let's be really honest about not being able to forgive the feeling of your ego of being right about mm -hmm. something is juicy. It feels good to be like, yes, I'm just thinking about this. Yeah. And he just can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. You get a little empowered by your righteousness and yes, because I know better. And I, you know, so you have to understand as you do that, you're going back into the scenario and you're giving your body the same energy, not good energy. So number one, I want you to understand that when you have trouble forgiving, you're getting fed by your ego, feeling right or justified, rationalizing right. something, right? So that is not our soul. That's the, that's the ego mind. And yeah. so- identifying that you're operating from a different place. We all go there. We're human. We, we have to, once we recognize it, we can work with it, but that's a normal part of living. And that's, we weren't taught forgiveness in that way. I mean, maybe you were raised in, in religion that tried to help you with that, but we weren't, it wasn't taught in a, in a, in a emotional intelligent way. It was just like, yeah. here's a prayer. Here's whatever we forgive. Right. So yeah. that's, we weren't, we've, we've not been taught how to work with this. So number one, just tell yourself, okay, wait, I am getting fed by not forgiving. It's serving me. And that's my ego, not my soul, right? That it doesn't come from my soul. And where do I want to operate from? So number one, you can just start with that. And number two, to realize that you're anchoring, your, anchoring yourself in the energy of the original discretion. You are putting yourself back there over and over again in your body. So it's yeah. very hard to forgive when you put the frequency back in right? Mm -hmm. When you anchor yourself in that, which is what you're doing. So that creates that chaos as well. And right. then the, the next thing that you, there's two things you could do. One, you could create a mantra, which is uh, something that even if you don't believe it in the beginning, you can start to say it, you know, I love you. I forgive you. 
I, I want you to have peace. I will have peace as well. And I release you to your journey as I release myself. You can create a mantra that you just say, even when you don't feel it in the beginning, just saying that out loud. Yes. You can say something like, I know you did the best you could. I did the best I could. I release you to your journey. I want yeah. peace for both of us. You can create that. The more you say it, start to integrate, just trust it. So creating a mantra, a yeah. short one, you can do that to help you embody it, to start working it in instead of whatever else you're saying every time you think about the situation. The, right. the very important aspect to realize about forgiveness is that each of us, this is a spiritual perspective, each of us incarnated with journeys that are all interlinked. And with this person or a situation that has created whatever is created in the big picture that we can't see has a role as you do for them, which yes. you might not know what that is. So we mm -hmm. step back and we say, I can't understand this bigger picture. I don't feel good about this at all. Can I trust that in the giant puzzle piece of life, that there are a couple pieces over there in the corner that represent us. And when I step back, I will see how they all fit together. Can I find my faith in this position that we are both here each doing the best we can based on our individual lives and experiences. And that even if I'm saying he should know better, he, he couldn't know better. That was all he could do. That was all she could do. We do what we can. And when we say someone should know better, they might know better intellectually. I knew that eating six glazed donuts before teaching a high, low aerobics class wasn't good right? on an intellectual level. Did I still go eat four donuts? I had many times, like that wasn't, that wasn't a big deal for me to eat four donuts and teach a class, but I should know better, but I couldn't do better yet because I didn't yeah. have the tools. The person that you feel so angry at only had tools to do what he or she could do. And right now you not being able to forgive means you're missing tools as well. So the fact that you can't find forgiveness is showing you you're missing some tools in your own growth. Yeah. It's a gift. And we, we tend to look at the other person in situations. Look what you did. You should know better. Why did you do that? Couldn't you have known? Um, and even if the person did know better, remember, we all know better. We all know maybe we're not supposed to go out and have four glasses of wine when we have something important to do the next morning and we're with friends and we have five glasses of wine. Of course, you know better, but you don't always do it, right? Mm -hmm. For a lot of reasons. And so it's the same thing when we're looking at forgiveness is it's a reflection back at yourself always. Yes. Right? It, it's it's mm -hmm. just so hard. And remember the reason why is that that's not your soul talking, it's your ego. And the ego wants to feel good and right and safe. And right. when you step out of that into forgiveness and, and, you know, the bigger picture is the mystery of life mm -hmm. and someone has an, something that's terrible. You're, you know, someone you love is killed by a drunk driver. Right. How do you find forgiveness for the person who went behind the wheel, knew better, or maybe didn't, and was careless and did that? you go through the whole process and you say, okay, if I can't forgive that person for doing something really terrible that should have known better, um, then in my life, I expect everybody to know better and do better all the time, no matter what. Right. That's not normal. That's not being human. Right. And so you got to, you've got to, then you, you know, you, if you're into prayer, then you ask your team and angels for mercy and to help you so to soften your heart. Yes. You know, there are a lot of different ways to, to go about this, but is it going to be easy if it's been deep seated? Of course not. Can you look at your own reflection and what you're meant to learn? Absolutely. There's always something there and it may take a while if it's something really severe and yeah. I give yourself time, give yourself time. But in most cases I see people holding grudges mm -hmm. for reasons that just are so toxic to 
to that person. Yeah. Like, what, you know, what, this is, how is this helping you? It's just serving your ego. There is no, there's nothing else here is going on other than you feel right and righteous and empowered by your thoughts. Right. So I hope that helps. It's, it is a very layered process to do, yeah. but we forgive so that you, you forgive. If I'm talking to you and let's say I'm talking to you, Stacy, and you're like, Oh, I just haven't really struggled. I'm like, you forgive to allow yourself to move on and not be anchored in the original energy from which it started, which is right. preventing you from living your life. You right. are consumed by that. So, and it's a gateway to open everything else up. And it is so empowering to be able to do that. And it's a sign that you are growing emotionally, spiritually on all levels. Right. When you, when you can do that, it is a sign of maturity. Yeah. It's a sign that you recognize where your ego wants to come in. And right. it's, it's a sign that you can say that was super horrible and unfathomable. And here's what I hear a lot. I would never do that. And like, okay, on your, in your journey, you would never do that. You're so, but I'm sure there are other things you've done. And in fact, we, we hurt people's feelings. We don't know it. We're all walking around wounding people <laughs> and small wounds. Sometimes we don't know what people's triggers yeah. are. Right. So the person that feels like they can't forgive, you had a, a role in that. And you might've triggered something in that person. That was a huge wound that that yeah. person ha hasn't dealt with. And so between the two of you, you've got work to do and it's just showing you that. Yeah. So it's all in the big process. It's always in the big process. And people, I mean, let's bottom line, we do the best we can with the tools right. we have. That's it. Mm -hmm. And I just want people to remember when you, when I hear they should know better, he should know better. He knows better. Why would he do that? I knew, I, I know, I knew eating you know, going, digging through the garbage to find food I threw away that I didn't want to binge on. I mean, I know better right. going to Seven Eleven at 11 o'clock at night to buy a bunch of food to eat. I know better, but right. I still did it. Right. I did it. I think that those are great. That's great advice. You know, so many people struggle with forgiveness. We all struggle for, with forgiveness, you know, and you know, the hardest thing is, is for people to forgive and let go. And it holds them back so much, you know, and it puts them in that chaotic mode where, because they can't grow, like you said, they stay stagnant, they stay stagnant and they're reinventing the situation over and over and over again. And all they're doing is creating the stress level of that moment that occurred and, you know, their cortisol levels going up, they're getting stressed They're you know, it, nothing good is happening except they're, they're just making, they're digging a hole for themselves, you know, just by not learning how to forgive and let go. And like you said, ego, letting go of that ego and just, you know, putting yourself for a second in that person's shoes, just forgive them and to learn to move on and just give mercy. And I think that's so important. I think that those are so, that's such amazing advice because oh, I think people good. struggle with that. Yeah, and I, if I could just add one more thing that sure. is in there because it's such an important topic and that is that we are in each other's life stories and we move in and out. So right now, Stacy, you're in my life story and I'm in yours right now for this moment, right? We're players in the story and people come in and out of our lives and what you don't always realize is your role in that story. So you're struggling with forgiveness, but you actually have a role in that person's life story. And you brought something up that maybe created the situation, but that person is now able to grow. Well, don't you, wouldn't you feel better knowing that someone could become a better person and that you can do the same because you were in a life story segment together. You're in a scene in a movie, right? You're in a scene in a movie. Here's what isn't a good scene. Here's not what we don't want. We don't go to a movie and want to see the same scene played for an hour and 20 minutes. What kind yeah. of movie is that? Same scene. Right. Oh, there's a scene. Oh, that's what you're doing when you don't forgive. We want to see a movie go from beginning to end. We want to see people up and down, grow, whatever. That's your life movie. So when you replay it because you can't forgive, think of it. That's what you're doing in your life movie with that person, that player, that actor, you came yeah. into a scene together for a reason. Now right. we need to move on and detach from what the outcome you expected. You're yes. attached to some outcome that's, that it's not there. It's not meant to be, yeah. but you can create something else and move through your life story.
and move into yeah. a, a really beautiful scene, that's your choice mm -hmm. not to replay it. Right. Just think, oh, do I want to be in this life? Do I want to think of going to a movie? And that's what you're doing. You're creating yeah. your own life movie and, you, and you're keeping a scene alive over and over and over again. Nobody wants to watch a movie or be in a movie like that. That's yeah. not any fun. Right. Yeah. It's not any fun. So th if that, if that helps, that's an example that I use sometimes. And it's sometimes people can pop that into their thoughts it's you know, a great or, the, or the mantra, you know, I, you know, I release you to your journey. I, I, I need to have peace. I do want you to have peace and say it even if, even if you don't believe it in the beginning. And oftentimes right. it changes you when you start to say that. So, yeah, you know, it's a gateway to unity consciousness and if you're dealing with something that's really big, the forgiveness requires huge compassion. Let's just let, let me say, I understand that that is a tall order and I'm not being glib about it. Yeah. And you can take your time, but you need to trust that in the bigger picture, in your life story, at some point here on earth or later, it will make sense. Right. And you can be a change agent in that story. You can be a change agent. And so that's what, that's what we're called to do. Right. Those of us that want to be courageous and dive in. And I hope that's all of you listening or watching. It's not easy, but we could do it. We're the warriors once we know, right? We do better when we know better. That's how I feel. hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now for your book, for Unchaos Yourself, who is your prime audience and what are they going to get out of reading your book? Yeah, that's such a, such a dilemma right now, Stacey, because I have reviews on Amazon and my, my mom who is 84 read it and said to me, she answered all the questions in the book and said, I can't believe the things I've learned about myself at 84. And, um, thank you for this process. And she, she even learned things about me because I write about my own journey. She didn't know. And then, you know, I have several 20 somethings that yeah. are starting their lives. Right. And then I have someone who's 45 that's in a 12 step program that's finding the book to be more valuable because it just, it, you know, and I'm not saying it to be pompous. It just aligns oh. with his journey more and yeah. spirit will get the book into the people that where even one chapter, one section, maybe you pick up, you know, the, maybe you open up to enlightenment or maybe you open up to sign symbols and synchronicity or split energy, yeah. whatever that one page could be it for you. So right. it really, I would say that if I could, I would say that if I could get it into the hands of people that are younger, maybe, you know, starting around age 30 or something before all the major life decisions are made, that would be great. Yeah. But it tends to show up more. So I would say once people hit major chaos, which is usually more in, I would say 45 to 65 is where or people are just done with it. I, I can't take this anymore. And then it yeah. ends up there. But having said that, the clients that I used to see that were older, if I could have seen them 20 years earlier, yeah. there would have been a change there if I can help people when they're younger. So it would be for anyone that feels like they're not understanding why they keep making decisions that don't feel right for them, even though they say they want to. Yeah. That's where it helps because it starts to unpack and unravel a little bit of your conditioning. I'm not big about being in your past. So there's a little, there's coaching in it. There's counseling, there's therapy. We do dive into your past a little bit so you can understand it. And then we move on from there. So I would say that's who it's for. And that could be at any age. It could be somebody who's waking up spiritually. This would be mm -hmm. a great book because of all the journal exercises that help you uncover aspects. And there, there are lots of different components to the workbook that are all pretty much all spiritually based in some way, even if it's very light, my book does yeah. say practical plus spiritual. So if you're not spiritual, I have what's called woo boxes, W O O woo boxes kind of for fun. And I say, if you see a woo box, you can skip it. You can read it. And at the very least you can say that's interesting if you're not believing about some of these things, but you can skip those and you can just go into like the, the part on forgiveness is mainly practical. I do yeah. see it from a spiritual perspective, but so you don't have to be spiritual, but it's going to make a lot more sense if you're at least waking up or curious right. or interested yeah. in that. And yeah, if you feel like you're stuck or if you are in patterns, for those of you old enough, it's the broken record syndrome. It's the same, you know what, same day, same, different day. So um, I call it the SSDD. So why is this always happening? Why is it 
coming up over and over again. Yes. Why am I not? Why is this pattern? Because it's and it's not just having it; it's that you don't want it, but you're continuing in it. Because right. some people are like, oh, "It's my life," and you know, I I I know someone um, that has shut down emotionally, and this person is very comfortable with that. And when we dig a little, it, we 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 did we did a little digging, and it was quite obvious that this person did not want to go there and wanted to live a life a little more shut down. That's it. You know, there's no desire there then. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Right. We're done. But if you're saying to yourself, I'm so tired of this and why this, why do I keep and why, and why do I feel like I don't know what I want? And I'm just like, ah, oh, and I feel like I'm that kind of stuff that the book is very, very helpful for that as well. And it's basically transformative and it's self-discovery, you know, yeah. on lots of different levels. And maybe you just need Maybe you just need the awareness, the first section to discover more inner knowingness and tribal patterns and conditioning, or maybe you go right to, you know, the empowerment section, um, and you stay there, you know, it, it's the alignment is the last section. And maybe you've done a lot of work. And, uh, if my book, if you open it up to one chapter, one page, and you get an opening and a shift, then it's done its job. Right. A lot of people obviously would it would be best to go and do all of the sections it's a lot of work to do all of it it's like you're diving in you're yeah. diving in you are diving in yeah <laughs> you are exposing things but to yourself on your own time right? right so i hope that answers it's one of those books where i wish i could say specifically you know and i've got both men and women um I, probably more women i mean that's kind of typical but Stacy, I will say that since I've been working in this field, I feel like a lot of men are left out, yeah. overlooked. I think that women needed empowerment based on the history of just everything, you know, of being, the, being, you know, having to wait years to be able to vote. I mean, obviously we need empowerment yeah. and I think we've been working very hard for years to get that movement going. But oh, in yeah. the spiritual sense, I also want men to know we're not forgetting about you and mm -hmm. you're important and your spiritual awakeness and inner knowingness is dynamic and beautiful and needed. So I don't want to forget about them, even though I would say I'm about 70% women probably that gravitate towards uh, my work, maybe probably, yeah, probably about 70, maybe 65, 70%. But yeah, so that's what I'd say. Any kind of chaos, any kind of self-discovery, curiosity and wanting to get out of patterns that you say you want to get out of, but you can't. Now, let right. me just also say though, really important. I even say it in my book on the chapter on narcissism and listen, if it's dangerous, if this is really serious stuff, then you need to do something extremely fast and quick and um, critical and big, like don't stay yeah. in something like this. Isn't the book that you pick up because you're scared. You're starting to feel danger it's dangerous right. because of your partner or something like that. Or, you know, your alcohol problem is getting to a point where you can endanger others. This, you know, no, then you go get the major help. So I just want to put that disclaimer out there as well. I want someone who's in really dire straits to go get help, but please, there's so much out there now, so many good people online everywhere. So don't, don't allow yourself to go down that road any further. If you already feel like you're really close to something really you know, with really dire consequences. Right. Cause that, yeah, I'm not there. I mean, the book would be helpful as a partner, but I want you to go get, you know, major professional help. If you feel like you're in that kind of chaos. And oh, yeah. so, yeah, we know what that means, but yeah. So I just wanted to put that disclaimer on there and to say to you, if you're listening or watching, there's so much help, please just, um, the world needs you to be strong and healthy. You have gifts, you matter. And yes. we need you. So please go get help if, if that's your case. A hundred percent. Now tell everybody about the services you provide. You know, right now that interestingly, I am basically, I've been seeing a lot of repeat clients and I'm doing what I call life clarity sessions. So it's intuitive life clarity, just to explain that. And that includes some spiritual coaching, some emotional intelligence, a little bit of NLP and a lot of intuitive help from your guides when we connect and the angels and whoever comes through. It's a combination of that. I'm 
not doing any major programs right now. I am working on what spirit wants me to do with that. I have lots of fun ideas and I'm not sure how that will show up, but right now I am seeing clients. And if you see this, then I know that you watched or seen part of it. And I kind of consider that to be vetted in a sense. I'm very much on, uh, on referrals. I, I pretty much work on referral based or something like this. That's, I vet my clients mainly, you know, for that. But right now, if you want intuitive life clarity, I am taking, I will be taking one, maybe two people to go through the whole process of the book together, which is anywhere from about two months up to five months with some heavy duty support and a lot of accountability. But I vet that seriously, that you've got to be really committed and ready to dive in really like I am ready to make a change and to commit to it. And so I'm very careful about vetting and, and on my website, you know, you can reach out to me and if it's something that you're interested in but right now, I'm offering the clarity sessions and hoping that you'll buy my book and do some of the, the uh, journal exercises in there, some of the meditations and open up something for yourself and then share it. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that it's that you can take it and share something and become a gateway person for the frequency and energy that we need in the world so desperately right now. We need mm -hmm. with what we walk into in line at Starbucks or wherever and the back and forth. We don't even need to talk about what all that is. We need right. people to walk in with a frequency of I'm curious. I can hear you. I can hear you. I can discern. I don't have judgment based on your life filters and how you feel and why you feel that way. I can feel I, a certain way, but I'm open to understanding that everybody's going to feel their way. Like if you can take that frequency from maybe one or two chapters from the book, uh, I would be eternally grateful because that's my mission. So, or if you need more clarity, and I just want to say that uh, I don't call myself a psychic in my services. I have psychic abilities, but I don't forecast for you. I help you figure out partly why you're struggling with not knowing. And I help you with signs, symbols, and synchronicities a little more so that you start to identify. And mm -hmm. I, I do energy calibration because that's the next level the angels gave me after doing a lot of work. And I, I was able to, I'm Reiki- master, but I don't do official Reiki, but I do energy calibration. And so I bring that into a session and I, I will, I do not forecast. I do help you with understanding how to make better decisions from your mm -hmm. soul, your soul journey so that you can take the next best step to the next higher version of yourself. And mm -hmm. I have gifted in understanding the landscape sort of of where you are and the angels and guides that come in are very good about giving me the next thing, important thing to know, like the next one or two things that are, are very important for you to get to the next one or two things so that you you get out of this barrier or if you're, you're stuck in this house, right? And it's chaos that we could open a door to at least mm -hmm. a walkway to the next place that you need to go. That's the vision right. that spirit just gave me. So right now that that's, that's a very long answer, but so I'm doing one-off intuitive sessions and I'm thinking, I'm considering one more, maybe more spiritual sort of coaching client that uses the book. And so that we do sessions every week to 10 days and get you through all of it together with a lot of intuitive guidance I along the way. It. Of course, a lot of, you know, a lot of that's, that's just a lot more intuitive guidance and coaching to keep you someone who needs a lot of accountability. Right. But is, but wants to do the work, right. You know what I mean, Stacy, like you oh, want to yeah. do it, but you're just like, I just need you to be there on the, when I call you on Wednesday. Cause ah, you know, and then, okay, I'm reset. Okay. I got it. Okay. I got it. Right. <laughs> and then you're resetting it. I'm like, ah, you know, because when I do a V and if it's a VIP level, then I, I am available more often. And I'm very careful because I had VIP clients before and it was, you know, I have to be careful with that. But I, if someone is really willing and I feel like if we get you there, this is a freaking, like you're going to just domino everywhere. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Then, and spirit calls me to do that. Then I, I will, then I do that. It's, yeah. it's very selective, but that kind of person we need in the world. And I'm excited to 
see and know what spirit will do because wow. again, back to magic. Right. So anyway, so that's it. So there's not a lot to, to promote, but my book and readings and maybe a, a more long-term spiritual coaching client with the process, because it's a five-step process. And so we go through, there's five steps and then there's about 25 sections within it. So we mm -hmm. go through a lot of different areas to get you out of chaos and into clarity and alignment in Love with it. your soul blueprint. I love it. Now, if you had to emphasize on some important factors that we talked about today, what are some things you'd like to really emphasize to the listeners? Right. One of the most important elements to feeling at peace and to stepping out of what feels like overwhelm is understanding that there really isn't a right or wrong in everything that's happening around mm. you. We like to say to you, but for you. And yeah. to have the understanding that it's how you react. I like to say, move into respond right. and the perspective around what's going on. So when we're in overwhelm, we feel crunched in, we feel like we can't make a right decision. We usually have a negative self-talk. So one of the most important elements is for you to be able to say to yourself, all of this happening is not wrong or right. It just is. And mm -hmm. it's my role now to look at the pieces and understand that my perspective is shifted from judging it as terrible to it is what it is. And it's how I respond. And I am in charge right. of deciding how much vitality and peace and fun and joy and fulfillment I want in my life. Right. I, you have to decide the people, the places, the things that are causing it are in your life story. They are providing a picture for you to have perspective from. They are not doing things to you to make life difficult. They right. are pieces. They are not wrong or right. They're pieces. So now you decide, how would I like to respond to this? Mm -hmm. And that is very empowering. And again, courageous. And the, the last thing I'll say about that is that, trust me when I say that we, we never really know how good it can feel and be until yeah. we start taking that journey. We just don't know what we don't know, which is moments of magic where you can't even believe you're alive, living here and appreciating yeah. and enjoying it. You can have those moments despite right. everything going on because we just don't know. And all of us, even at a good level, good, I'm calling in quotation yeah. marks, we don't even know the next level, right? Stacy, you'll hit right. another level at some point. I'll hit another level. So- Take away the good and bad in your journey mm -hmm. and stop judging everything and yourself. I think that's so important because it frees up yeah. your spirit to be more oh, curious. Yeah. And because, uh, and I use right and wrong in discussion. I'm sure you, I mean, it's just a normal, normal vernacular. So I use it, but I want you to, I want you from now on to realize in the bigger picture and on your journey, there really is no right or wrong. And right. I'll leave that with, you get in a car accident and you wreck your car on the way to what you thought was going to be the interview that was going to get you your dream job. Right. And you, it's terrible. It's bad. It's that's so bad. You know, Oh my God, that's the most terrible thing. And then you get to the hospital and the nurse ends up being your life partner, the love of your life. Mm -hmm. And you, your journey is indescribable with this person. That's good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so how do we look at the big picture? Right. I mean, right. throwing years ago, cigarettes out the window and dropping our, um, and littering was bad, right. Quote bad, right. New pollution laws to stop pollution. Good in quotation marks. Yes. It, it's just a big full circle. And I hope that can give you peace. And no matter what you're dealing with to have that perspective change. And, and I'm saying to you now, you decide 
if you want to see how good it really can be. Yeah. Because we get surprised over and over again when we open up to that. Yeah. And that perspective change. Um, so get out of your, this is so bad. This is so bad. This is so bad. My life. And then uh, you're in your life movie. And it's, the next scene is waiting for you yeah. to be created. You're in charge. You're the director. You're the producer. You're the key actor. Sometimes you're a, you know, you're a, a, uh, an extra in someone else's movie, but as far as your movie, <laughs> The one you direct, <laughs> that's your decision. So we're going to look at the movie scene. We're going to say, take right and wrong out. We're going to go, okay, what's the perspective here? Because yeah. I can't see the end of the movie. <laughs> I know how I want to feel. I know how I want to feel at the end. So it's my yeah. job to to find ways to feel that way. But how it's right. all going to come in, right? That's exactly. the magic of the universe. 100%. 100%. Now, where can we find you? So everything is at... Tina Anderson, OC.com. And that's T I N A A N D E R S O N. Tina Anderson, OC stands for Orange County in California because there's, there are a lot of Tina Andersons. And that's my social media as well. And I have links at my website. It's very simple. You can find me there and um, other, you know, on Instagram or Facebook as well. And uh, if you want to reach out, that's the easiest one. And you can write to me there leave a message. There's a link to the book. There is a, a cool a little gift you get when you purchase my book through a link on my website and not straight from Amazon. But but when you get the book from Amazon, there is a QR code that will get you there as well. The QR code in the book is um, is where you get your gifts. And I, I did seven intuitive messages and they, you get to click on whichever one you're led to and they're recorded directly. And you probably already know this, but whenever you get a message, it doesn't matter if someone did a, you know, something online five years ago, but you just happen to see it. That's the time when you're supposed to see it. So it doesn't matter whenever you click on that, but you'll have a choice to click on one of seven that you'll be led to. And there's a theme for each one and it's an intuitive message for you. And then there's some other handouts that are not in the book that are visual as well because i'm very visual so you get those gifts as well from the qr code and you can get that through the link on my website or you, if you get the book on amazon then you just click the qr code and i've got some gifts for you as well on there fun gifts i think <laughs> helpful. helpful and fun for sure i love it i love it this has been amazing tina i thank you so much for coming on the show and tell everybody your podcast um before we go Oh, yes. So I, that's probably something where you, I'm not sure where you read that. So that my podcast is on hiatus, but it was, it is called Unchaos Yourself. I have, I have a, a lot of different uh, variations, let's just say. So um, I, I keep it up right now. I don't know if I'm going to go back to it. Um, I come from radio. I was an early adapter of podcasting. So I was in it years and years and years and years ago and loved it and then decided I really like live radio and I'm not in it and this isn't really doing it for me. So I kind of gone back and forth if I'm being transparent, but it's called Unchaos Yourself. It is out there. You can get it. There are great episodes. And if you go way back to the OGs when I was in fitness, there's some great episodes for fitness. And my most popular ones are like battle plan, you know, for the holidays or um, kind of, I think there's one about getting flat abs, which is always what I got asked as a, you know, as an instructor and, and a trainer, which is yeah. like ad nauseum, like, oh my God, if somebody else asked me about getting flat abs, I am freaking going to lose my mind. Um, so there's one on that. There's one. So there are a ton of, uh, really good fitness ones. And most of them are still pretty relevant. Cause I was doing kind of cutting edge stuff back then when I was in fitness yeah. and then it goes into, and then there's life in the groove when I was doing a syndicated radio show and I had some great guests. And so that was then repurposed as a podcast. Then it moves into on chaos yourself, um, which is more spiritual stuff. So you really, if you feel like you want to go back and listen to some interesting shows there, absolutely. You'll hear variations of my life and me and, um, really some really fun interviews with some really interesting people and, I leave it up and still have it as a promotion because there's good content and there's good information. And as we know, spirit will send you to the right place, right person, right time. Divine timing is perfect. And maybe it's the one thing you need to hear. So you can check that out as well and peruse through all the, I think there's about 123 or 24 episodes. I even talk about my, um, I call it vaginal 
physical therapy that I had. So there's <laughs> like, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff on there. Uh, it's, it's all over the place. Pretty interesting. I'm pretty, I'm pretty honest about stuff on there. So it. yeah, thanks. It's called Unchaos Yourself. I love just it. Like, I love yeah, it. just like the book. Yeah. I love it. This has been amazing, Tina. Tina, thank you so much for coming on the show. I love all the advice. I hope we can have you on the show at a later time. I think uh, this was a great episode. You really shared a lot of important things. You know, everybody goes through chaos and some people go through it and it hits them a little harder than others. But, you know, the, the advice you shared today was outstanding. And I, I really wish you the best of luck with your book. I think it's going to do absolutely well because it's mm. just something I think everybody could use in their daily life. Definitely. Thank you. Appreciate the time with you and congratulations on all the good work you're doing in the um, world too. Appreciate we're soul sisters, you know, moving along, trying to open doors and help people walk through and do our own work as well. And that's what it's all about. So I appreciate the time being on your show as well. Thank you. Oh, uh, you're welcome. And thank you. You have a great day. You too.